Hello everyone and welcome to the Brugly Valentine's Day special. This is a bonus video for the week, so you're still gonna get a new video on Wednesday and Friday. You're just getting this one extra. But I thought since it's Valentine's Day, I would compile all of the fan-made Backrooms Levels videos that I've ever made into one huge video for you all. Now, depending on how this video does, I might bring the fan made level series back, so if you do want it to come back, make sure you let me know down below. This video will be over an hour long, so just sit back and relax and enjoy the soothing terrifyingness of the back rooms. Let's get into it. Starting off the video, we have Smiler. Now, Smiler's created a ton of different levels for me, but the one I'm going to feature in this video is called Old Memories or level 6.1. Smiler gave this level a difficulty of 5, but he also said it's safe and secure too, so I don't know how that works. But we'll go with it anyway. The level looks like your own house, and it's even got everything you had from real life, from your pets to your video games to your family, and it's very peaceful there. You can actually live here too, like they don't try to hurt you or anything. It almost sounds too good to be true though. But to enter this level, you have to be on level 6 and then have a mental breakdown. <laughs> Yo, what? And when you do, an entity known as Lucy will approach you and say that she'll bring you somewhere safe where you can live peacefully. If you accept this offer, she'll bring you here. The only catch is that your family are actually holograms, so they're not actually like physical, but you can still see them and interact with them, so it's not that bad. And there is no outside of this house, instead it's just a black void, but outside of there it's still a safe area. If you leave the house, you'll just be sent back to level 6, and the fridge inside of the house restocks with almond water every 4 days, and because of this, you can pretty much just live here semi-normally. But if you do want to leave, like I just said, you would just walk out the front door. I'd use this level to relax because there isn't any enemies in there. And plus, it would be kind of nostalgic since it looks like home. Dope stuff, Smiler. Thank you for your support and your submission. Next up is Triple Fist level called Level Doll Face. This level is classified as Class 2, and it's literally 100% impossible to die, except for like one or two very rare exceptions. And there are actually some helpful entities in this level, and we'll talk about them later down in this description. The level itself looks like an infinite expanse of fake grass that stretches north and south, and on the east and west, it stretches for about 5 meters. And then once you get past that 5 meter mark, there are 4 lane roads on each side, with cars on them going like 150 miles an hour. Nice. And beyond those roads, there is an infinite line of Walmart stores that, like I said, are infinite and they repeat over and over again. And there are no differences in how they look, except some stores vary slightly in saturation on the colors of their buildings. But other than that, there's literally no difference. The level has no day-night cycle, and it's stuck at a constant 12pm and all the watches and clocks in this level say the same thing, 12 p.m., so that's nice. If you somehow run in front of a car or, you know, die somehow, you'll just respawn at the beginning of the level with all your stuff. There are actually six different zones to this level, the safe zone, the backyard, the friendly entity zone, the hostile entity zone, and the super safe zone, and then lastly, null. The backyard is about 100 miles from the start of the level, and you have to get in a car to get to these different zones. So the backyard zone is the exact same as the original zone, except the grass has random of backyard items like sports balls, plants, and chairs, you know, typical stuff like that that would be in a backyard. There's a huge difference in hunger depletion here. The friendly entity zone is one of three places where you can interact with entities on this level, and it's about 500 miles from the spawn. Now given by the level name, these entities are doll faces, and they refuse to attack you no matter what, so that's kind of nice. They also will give you helpful hints on how to leave the level. Now the hostile entity zone is about 2,000 miles from spawn, and again, these entities are doll faces, but they're constantly hostile and they cannot be tamed except with super almond water. They refuse to actually kill you, but they will hurt you as much as possible without killing you, so that's nice. The super safe zone is the exact same as the safe zone, but it's physically impossible to cause harm to yourself at all, not even a scratch, and this is about 3,000 miles from spawn. The final zone is called Null. This is an area where it's a pitch black expanse and there's no Wi-Fi, no connections, no anything. And if you stay in this area for longer than 50 seconds, well, you're dead. So, that's nice. As far as colonies and outposts go, there are none here. Nice. To enter this level, you have to have tamed a doll face with an entity warder object, which is an object that can be found on level 0, and all creatures are afraid of it except for tamed doll faces. 
Now these are extremely rare and there's no concrete description of what they look like, but if you want to come here, you have to find one. So to leave this level, you have to cross the road on one side of that grass expanse and get into a Walmart. And when you walk inside of the Walmart, there will be an entity warder there. And if you give one to the doll faces there, you'll be sent back to level zero. And this was unlike any level that I've heard of. Like it's so unique and random at the same time, but that's what makes the levels fun and interesting, how random they are. Thanks for your submission. Next is Fantina's level, called Home Sweet Home. This level is considered safe, and there are only two entities here. Even though it's labeled as safe, there is still a possibility for psychological stress to happen, such as symptoms of schizophrenia or sometimes severe depression. These effects will only last for as long as you're inside the home. Physically, the level looks like a rendered area of the city Pyongyang in North Korea. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. And it has the exact same proportion as the real-life city, too. The day-night cycle is exactly three hours, but there's no gradual transition between day and night actually, so it just happens instantly, like somebody's flipping your light switch off and on. There's a constant white material that resembles snowfall, except it's not snow, it's sulfur, yeah. but it's freezing cold, so it might as well be snow. And it's recommended to wear face masks when the sulfur is falling, so you don't inhale it. Through the entire level, there's a barely visible mist that has a purple tint to it that hovers over the buildings, and this prevents you from seeing the actual sky. You can just see the light that passes through it. When it turns to night, nothing eventful happens except some of the buildings turn their lights on and the street lamps come on as well. The only negative thing about the night is that the effects of the schizophrenia seem to be a lot worse here and the paranoia will start to set in for some reason. The level does have some ambient sounds. It sounds like people talking or car sounds or bird noises. And there's even sounds of rain here, even though it never rains. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of like a white noise machine. Cars don't work on this level. And some of the buildings look like they're poorly textured or rendered and they don't have any texture at all and they kind of look like a bad video game. These spots are the best spots for no clipping. Only some of the buildings can actually be entered, and they've got some furniture and random papers and books and stuff like that, and all the text is obviously in Korean, and there's paintings of North Korea's leaders everywhere too. Nice. There are two entities here, like I said earlier. The first one is the citizen entity, and these are mannequins that are found all over the entire level. They have no face or any describing features, but there are male and female and children ones as well. They're dressed for a work day or whatever outing they're doing that day, and they look like they're on the way to their job, but they're constantly frozen in place. However, they do slightly move throughout the day. And then inexplicably, they just go home at night. So that's cool. You can destroy these mannequins easily, but when you do, you'll get this huge rush of anguish and grief, almost like you just destroyed a real person, which is weird because they're mannequins. The other entity is called the Night Guard. Now, these are kind of creepy. These are mannequins as well, but they're dressed like police officers in police uniforms, and they only become active the second the night starts. They have weapons and flashlights as well, and if they see you, they're going to chase you. And to make it even creepier, they only move towards you when you blink. So if you blink, they move towards you, which is, that is, yeah, okay, that's terrifying. If you're spotted, then they'll chase you and try to kill you, and if you die, well, it's unknown what happens to you. But some say you return to level one. There's also a slight chance that the night guards will just arrest you instead of killing you, and they'll put you in jail for exactly one hour before releasing you. There are five ways to escape this level. One is through the sewers, which could take you to level two but the sewers are full of guards, so it's pretty dangerous and not advised. You can escape through getting inside of a car, which will knock you out, and then you'll wake up on level 69. You can jump off the edge of the area where the map ends, and sometimes you can just fall asleep on this level and you'll end up on level eight, so. And the most common way to exit is you can escape through the offices that are in the office buildings because there are some doors that just say exit on them, so that's convenient. To enter this level, you can no-clip through the floor on any level below 200 and end up here. Or you can watch the TV on level 42 that's displayed an invitation ad for this level and then once you watch that ad you'll wake up on this level so that's nice those guards are terrifying though how they only move when you blink like that's that's nightmare inducing stuff but good stuff thank you for your submission next is rob lee's level and it's level negative 333 million five hundred fifty six thousand seven hundred and eighty nine and is classified as class four now the level itself looks like a giant kids play area or a playhouse and it's got over 3.4 billion square miles, so that's cool. There's also a bunch of mini levels inside of this level. We'll talk about those a little bit later. At the corners and at the very middle of the level, there are bottomless ball pits. Totally not creepy at all. But like I just said, there are 45 mini levels inside of this. And most of the entities are located on mini level 34. So this level is a hallway that has those bubble windows, like from the McDonald's playhouses in real life. And there are slide holes in the walls that you can get in and exit this level and go down to the 
lower level. To enter this level, you can go to a building on level 11 and jump off of a tall one and you'll end up here, or you can no-clip through the floor on level 0. To exit this level, you can find the giant slide on top of the mini level, and if you slide down it, you'll exit through a ball pit at the end. Or you can no clip through the wall on mini level 20, and this will take you to level 10. The normal entities here are partygoers and windows, and the custom entities are the ball pit creatures, tubes, and balloons. Ball pit creatures are black entities with smilers faces on them. They also have sharp claws but no legs, and they live in the bottom of ball pits. That's terrifying. The tube creature is a giant snake that resembles a slide, and they're mainly on the lower levels. Okay. And lastly, the balloon creature is, well, a balloon, and they'll float around and attempt to strangle you with their rope. That's weird. And sometimes they'll pick you up and dangle you over a ball pit to feed you to a ball pit creature. So that's nice. There are no bases here for the risk that the party goers pose, and there's almond water and food everywhere here, so I guess that's nice. But the ball pit creature is terrifying. Like, imagine a creature that lives in the bottom of a ball pit. Like, that's scary. Good stuff. Next up is Duller's level, which is level negative 28, aka the Nitrogen Forest. This level is unsafe and unsecure, and there's an entity infestation. Physically, it looks like a giant forest covered in nitrogen, and there are white spruce trees everywhere. The level is constantly snowing, and the temps can reach as low as negative 16. It's pretty cold. The entities here are Dullers, Frost Golems, Frost Watchers, and various other ones, and they're all covered in ice. There are also unique weapons here, like ice swords and bows and stuff like that. To enter this ice level, you can no clip through the floor on level 11, and to exit, you can go through the door on the border of the level, which is about a thousand meters away from spawn, and this will take you to level 11. There is one colony here called the Frostmen, and they're known for being very welcoming to travelers, and they're open to trade. Nice stuff. I would love to see more snowy levels like this, especially for the holidays coming up, so good stuff, Duller. Thank you for your submission. Next up is Ecto Jelly's level, called Level Asterix, or Level Yes, But No. Nice. It's got a survival difficulty of 3. This level is said to take away the feeling of dread that you typically have in other Backrooms levels, and replaces that feeling of dread with disappointment. So I don't know if that's any better, but this is because most people who end up here think they've escaped the Backrooms and have managed to get back to reality, but they're proven wrong when they've closely examined their surroundings. After you realize you're actually not back in reality, your disappointment will fade, and you'll actually find an odd sense of contentment, because this level is mildly peaceful. When you first enter the level, you wake up in a grass field near a beach, and the sky is cloudy and blue and overcast, and the field is full of desaturated grass. There are a bunch of houses here made out of a cream brick, and they're all scattered around. They're pretty small, typically about 20 feet in length, and they got nothing special inside, but sometimes they have food and drink, but it's not there often enough to rely on. The most common food is a plate of cookies with a glass of milk, so I guess that's nice. I would come here just for that. The milk doesn't spoil, and it's always cold. Also, in some cases, there's chocolate milk, which is a delicacy in the back rooms, which I didn't know, so that's cool. The ambient sounds of this level are soft sounds of waves crashing on the beach, and the sounds of seagulls flying, even though seagulls have never been seen here, which is creepy but it's cool you can hear them at least. This level is around 50 miles in length and width, and the middle part of it is the grassy area, with the surrounding border of the level being beach. The ocean water is only knee deep, and it goes out for about half a mile before dropping off into an endless void. And some reports say that when you approach this void, a person gets a strong feeling of wanting to jump off, and for those who have, well, they've never been seen again. There are different theories, of course, on what happens when people jump into the void, ranging from them dying to being transported back to reality. This level has two entities that are native to this exact level. One is called the Trojan or the Mole Horse. It looks like a large, muscular horse standing at about nine and a half feet tall, and they're completely hairless and they have leathery skin. Its head's like more of a reptile than a horse, and it has no eyes, so it relies on hearing and scent to travel. They don't run away when someone approaches them, and they're pretty friendly to humans, but they're kind of aggressive sometimes, and they'll kill you if they wanted to. Ecto actually drew this Trojan horse model, which is super dope, so thank you for doing that. Like I just said, not all of the Trojans are kind, and some will instantly kill you if you approach them and if they feel threatened, so just don't approach them. The other entity here is called Worms, and they look just like normal garden worms, except they're 200 feet long and 10 feet thick. Nasty. They have a mouthful of rotating teeth as well. Okay. They aren't very 
intelligent, and they eat Trojans and humans alike. They reside under the ground, and they only surface on the beach to capture prey. And they don't have any eyes, so they just sense things through vibration. So because of this, it's good practice just to avoid the beaches. The only ways out of the level are getting a ride from a Trojan, or finding a doorway in some of the houses that'll take you to another level. These doorways are located in the main colony, which is in the very middle of the island. And the best way to get there is by hitching a ride on a willing Trojan. This level seems pretty relaxing to me. I mean, I would stay here just to hear the ambient sound of the beach and the waves crashing and stuff, because that's relaxing. But good stuff, Ecto Jelly. Thank you for your submission. Next up is Salmon Mancer's level, which is level 363, aka Halloween time in Michigan. Oh baby, I love this one already. I had to include this level since it's October now, and I love Halloween and stuff like that, so yeah. This level is classified as Class Zero, meaning it's safe and secure. The layout is like a suburb area with an occasional patch of forest that cuts off the road. All the houses are decorated for Halloween with the lights and stuff, and all the entities here are passive entities and they revolve around trick-or-treating. Now trick-or-treaters are actually the first entity and they're obviously humanoids that resemble little kids dressed in Halloween costumes, and they go around collecting candy from treat givers. No one knows where this candy comes from or where it goes, but like I said I just mentioned treat givers and well they give treats to kids, so that's literally all the entity is. And they give candy like Kit Kats and Reese's, so they got good taste. And they actually never run out of candy, which is cool. The next entity is the Trick Givers, and their entire goal is to scare you or trick you, but they're actually pretty nice when you get to talk to them, so. To enter this awesome level, you can walk through the orange door that has cobwebs on it on level 21, and you'll end up here. You can also enter by following a witch entity on level 0 for about 5 minutes, and to leave this level, you can enter an abandoned house, which will take you to level 9 or you can take the community bus to level 11. This level was so cool, bro. Like, I love Halloween, and I would legitimately just live here if I was stuck in the back rooms, because I love the vibe, but thank you for your submission, dude. This is awesome. Next is Mr. K's level, called level 919, aka the Misty Coastline. This level is classified as class 4, being unsafe and unsecured with a medium entity count. The level itself is a long coastal beach with a slow fog that constantly rolls over it. Even though you're on a beach, you can't hear any water splashing sounds, which is kind of disturbing. There's one big lighthouse on the edge of the beach, and it's slightly worn down, but that's just typical of a lighthouse. Inside of the lighthouse, there are these huge flights of stairs that lead straight up to the top. The tide comes in once every 10 minutes, and they're either large or small, both of them being dangerous. So in order to avoid these, you have to get to high ground and avoid the water at all costs, because if you touch it, it'll suck you down with a strong rip current. The best thing to do to avoid it is to seek refuge in the lighthouse, which is obviously the safest spot. The only downside to the lighthouse happens on the outside, and that is because the light that the lighthouse emits is actually a hazard to you. Because if you see it and you look directly into it, there's a good chance you'll go blind. So, don't do that. The entities here include the Watcher, which is a humanoid with a fedora and has tentacles for arms, so cool. Just don't get in its line of sight and you'll be fine. Another entity here is the Whisperer of the Mist, which is a whisper that comes from the fog that tries to lure you into the water. Another entity is the Murky Sunkers, which are dark blue tar-like entities covered in seaweed, and they appear in the water when the tide comes in. Just don't make loud noises to alert them because they are very, very hostile. The last entity is called the Fog Smiler, which is a normal smiler, but they live in the fog. To enter this level, get almond water from a vending machine on level 11, and then go sit on the beach there for 30 minutes. And then you'll be sent here. To exit this level, you have to fix up the rundown boat that's docked by the lighthouse. This level is also really cool. I know I say that about all of them, but seriously, like all your guys' ideas are so cool, and I love hearing about them. They're all so unique. Like, good stuff, guys. Thank you, Mr. K. And last for today's video is Colin's level, which is level 2008, 2015, aka the office level. This level is the exact layout of the office from The Office Show, and it has all the same characters here too as entities. For instance, Jim will pull pranks on you, and Dwight will try to kill you with any assortment of different weapons he can find. Nice. And the entity of Michael will just sit there and watch you and laugh at you. Over the loudspeaker in the office, there is always the office theme song playing, so that's creepy. And there is no exit, so just don't come here, I guess. I included this one because it's just hilarious to me. Thank you, Colin, for your submission. 
So we are going to be starting with Creator GD's level. This is level 973, aka Soviet Housings. This level is classified as a class 4 zone and is unsafe to live on. The physical description of this level is super cool and is a supposed USSR state that has buildings and structures and roads and streetlights that date back to the mid 70s. However, the cars there are modern and they're parked everywhere. The level itself is mysterious because almost all of the apartment buildings are locked but the ones that aren't locked are normally fully explorable. And each room in the various buildings varies from a 1940 style to a mid 2010 style. And they all have supplies located in the refrigerators, the bathrooms, and there's also supplies in the only gas station on the level. This level is similar in size to the capital of Latvia, which is Riga. Many creatures and entities have been seen in the abandoned buildings because that's the only place they spawn on this level. And it's because they spawn in the darkness. And the most common of those entities is the window entity and these are blacked out and you can barely see them but they should be avoided at all costs so they don't suck you in the other entities on this level include hounds party goers smilers and facelings pretty dangerous stuff overall as far as entrances and exits go the most common entrance is leaving the parking lot on level 1, which takes you to this level through a long tunnel. However, some explorers have said that they got to this level by going through an exit on level 69, but this is just a rumor as of right now. To exit this level, you must walk through the door labeled Kitty in one of the apartment buildings, and this will take you up one level to level 974, and you'll fall through the ceiling and land on a bed in Kitty's bedroom. Another supposed way to leave this level is by no clipping through one of the brick walls on an apartment building, but there's no real proof of this, and the people who claimed this was true had very low sanity. Creator DG man, this is a dope level, and it's definitely unique, and I really like how you mix the mid 1900s style with modern cars and rooms. I feel like that's super cool, and it's not been done before. At least that I've seen. Good stuff, dude. Next up is Encore, and he created two levels, which is super cool. The first of the levels is called the Restrooms, or Level R. This level is a semi-dirty bathroom that goes on for seemingly an infinite amount. The walls are white tiles, but they're turning a nasty yellow color. The floor is skin-colored, and this changes shades depending on how far you walk. There is only one entity on this level, and those are janitors, and they only appear halfway in the level. Besides that, there isn't really any other creatures on this level, besides very rarely there being a skin stealer here trying to steal a janitor's skin. To get to the bathrooms level, you can enter a woman's or men's bathroom entrance in almost any hotel on any other level and it will lead you here. But if you enter the bathroom that isn't meant for your gender, that will send you to level question mark question mark question mark, which you don't want to go. To exit this level, you can either enter a bathroom stall, which will cause you to faint immediately, and this will teleport you to a bathroom in a house in the suburbs on a level, or a farmhouse on a level. And it's unknown why it's different sometimes. Or you can walk in a janitor's closet which will teleport you to a school bathroom. There are three different zones to this level too. The first zone is called the safe zone. This is where most people will take refuge at and this zone has trash cans and food supplies and places where you can sleep and rest. The second zone is called closed for cleaning or CFC. This is where all the janitors are at so travel carefully here if you have to go through. The last zone and most dangerous obviously is called the beyond and you'll want to wear very thick clothes or even a hazmat suit if you go here because there are these spills and goo on the wall and if you even so much as touch whatever that liquid is you'll instantly die or if you're very unlucky you'll start melting alive so that's nice the second level that encore made is called checkpoint zero this is a check-in desk in the back of a room that has a 1908 fancy hotel kind of vibe this level is a room that seemingly goes up for an infinite amount it has red and gold wallpaper and the room is very heavily furnished there are supplies in this level like guns and food, as well as almond water and hazmat suits. There is only one entity on this level, and it's one that Encore created himself. It's called the Hotel Keep. This is a passive entity and a kind entity that wears a fancy red and gold suit and has skin like a void with no discernible features. To enter this level, you can no clip and faint through a wall on any level and you'll end up here. And to exit this level, you can take one of the two elevators behind the desk and that'll put you on a random level, or you can talk to the Hotel Keep and then he'll put you on a different level. So yeah, Encore created level R, the restrooms, and checkpoint zero. These are cool levels, dude. I like that you created the Hotel keep as your own entity that's super dope i hope to see more of you guys doing that kind of stuff too next up is 3910 and he or she i don't know which created three different levels the first of these levels is called the dark halls or level negative 61093625471642 there are three zones to this level the first being the bright zone 
the second the dark zone, and the last the black zone. On the light zone, there are no creatures, and the almond water is abundant there. And there's also weapons and supplies here too. And this zone is physically the brightest zone with the best visibility. The dark zone is very dangerous and has tons of entities, and most of them are skin stealers. There are less resources in this zone, and it's much darker too. The third and final zone is the blackened zone. This level is almost completely pitch black and has very little viewing distance. And almost every entity is on this level somewhere, but the most common entity is the insanities. There is very strong armor and weapons available in this zone, but the risk of traveling to it is super high. So to get to this dark halls level, you can no clip through the clouds on level 988, or you can drink super almond water on level 177. To exit this level, you have to find five super almond waters in the light zone and drink them all, or you have to cure 10 insanities with almond water. The next level 3910 made is called level computer or level 813-119-147. This level is very different from all the other levels in the back rooms. It's an infinite expanse of computers that are opened directly to the Meg database. This is where the HackerBot entity lives, and this is a creature that can turn off any computer if it gets close enough. However, Super Almond Water does help you be immune to the HackerBot temporarily. To get to this level, you can no clip through the floor on level 18, or drink a Super Almond Water during a blackout on any level. To leave this level, you have to go find a computer that's labeled 6943 and search something on it. Or you can type the words the hive into computer 6. 6000, or you can break computers numbered 160, 69, 420, and 500. Doing one of those three things will take you out of this level. The third and final level that 3910 created is called the Cinema. This is a very peaceful level with no hostile entities. Somehow, there are peaceful facelings on this level that run the theaters. I don't know how that's possible, but there are. They will play you any movie that you request. It's pretty nice. To enter this level, you have to find an open book called Movie Theaters Adventures, or you can walk through the brown door labeled C in the dark halls. You can also enter this level by walking through the black door on level negative one. And to leave this level, you can play any Avengers movie which will lead you to the hive level, or you can leave by calling the number 694-20-694. If I was stuck in the back rooms, I would definitely hit up the cinema all the time because it seemed like a peaceful place to me, so. Last, but definitely not least for today's video is a level created by Cynthia named the Sanity Rooms. It's a class three room and it's very unsafe, but secure. It has a low entity count, but the one that's here is very dangerous and I'll talk about that in a second. This level is a huge infinite garden with no day-night cycle, and it's really dark all the time. It fills you with this dread feeling because everything is devoid of color. The flowers are all black and the grass does not have any color, and this lack of color is very dangerous because it can drive an explorer crazy. The entities on this level are smilers, janitors, and insanities, and other entities sporadically come on this level, but those aren't the dangerous ones. To get to this level, you have to successfully go to level fun, and then survive that level, which takes you to level 11, and then level 11 will take you to level 36, and then from level 36, you no clip into a bookshelf that'll take you to the end level. After you do all those things in succession, then you'll be brought to the sanity rooms. That is a lot of work for a colorless garden. I don't know about it. There are two ways to lead this level. One of those is you can go to the garden house and that'll take you back to the end, or you can walk until you faint and you have to fall exactly on a flower, and this will teleport you to the 64-bit integer limit. It sounds like a lose-lose situation to me, though. The entity that I was talking about how dangerous it is is one that Cynthia created herself. It's called the Gardener. She is a young female with red hair, and she wears a long golden robe, and you have to avoid her at all costs because if she sees you, she will spray you with water like she's watering you like a plant. If this water hits you, you'll become one of her flowers. That's really dope. This level is definitely crazy, and it seems really hard to leave, but the gardener is also one of the coolest entities that I've ever seen, so I definitely like him. The first level is from the homie Rob Lee, and it's a class five difficulty, and he submitted his level in kind of a story format, so I'm just gonna read it to you like it is. It's pretty creepy, so get ready. After a long walk through the endless caves in level eight, you stumble upon a very bright light. As you walk towards it, you can see a strange door, the one that you'd use for something like a closet. As a wrangler sees you open the door, it begins to come after you. You get through the door just in time. You see a bright purple light and you start to walk towards it. At the same time, you're hearing the world behind you crumble and you'll start to fall through a void. This is just the beginning. After this event, you'll fall for about 20 minutes, and then you'll hear this clock chime so loud that it will literally rip your eardrums. Also, sorry my voice is sore. My voice is literally so hoarse right now. I've been yelling at a football game, so 
bear with me here. Your eardrums are supposed to be broken, so don't worry about it. You're not alone, and not in the way you think. If you want to get out alive, I suggest you stay away from that suspicious bottle of almond water sitting in the middle of this place. You look around and see wet grass everywhere with trees spread apart, just enough so you can see through them. And in the distance, you see a town. This is one of the colonies you'll stumble across on your journey. Be careful though, because some of the colonies are very dangerous. As you start to witness all of this, you realize something. You're hearing, it's just gone. You start to talk louder and louder, louder than you've ever talked before, and you still can't hear yourself. But somehow you suddenly know sign language. This is so shocking that you drop your phone not knowing how loud it would be. Because of how quiet it is, that phone drop will wake up an entity called the Scratchers. This is very bad. As you find a hearing aid laying on the ground, convenient, you put it in your ear. You hear very loud screaming and you start to panic. Your heart beats so fast you think you overdosed on caffeine. As you run for your life through the faint forest, you realize a house is in the distance. And then it's a whole town. As the screaming becomes more faint in the distance, you run into the entrance of the strange town. You find someone and you ask them what this place is, and he tells you, oh hey, you're a wanderer. Yeah, this place is pretty great. We never leave this town though because of the forest out there. Yeah, those creatures are very scary and dangerous. But hey, come on, let me show you around. As you walk through the town, it starts to feel like home. There's a small supermarket on the side of the road. You feel like you're back in reality and never want to leave. This is where your journey ends. You wake up in the middle of the night to whispers. You walk into the forest and you start to see people. As they walk deeper into the foggy forest, you follow them. Little do you know, this colony is going to do something bad to you. As you enter the forest, you have a plastic bag trapped over your head and you suffocate and pass out. You wake up chained to a tree in the forest. You look down in front of you and you see people chanting. As you look into the fog in the distance, you see a giant creature walking towards you. This is the end. This is your fault. But don't worry. This is just the beginning. <laughs> what did I just read, bro? The entities here are the humans, the cult members, and the scratchers. And like I said, you woke up the scratchers when they dropped your phone. And those are the creatures that have long claws and they live in the forest. And they're giant with this huge jaw that opens up and it hangs really far from its face. It kind of looks like their legs got amputated, but they do have razor sharp teeth and very big fists. Entrances and exits. Entrances. Why would you want to enter? Exit. There is no exit. This is your new reality. Well, Robly, that was certainly an interesting level. I will give it to you. Nice stuff, man. Next up is another patron named Yao yeah, okay. <laughs> I like the name, dude. His level is called Unsymmetrical. The level is classified as a mental hazard and is unsafe and unsecure and has a sanity hazard on it. Nice. The level Unsymmetrical is categorized as an enigmatic sublevel that has a dimension of about 12 by 18 feet. It looks like a modern living room and it has furniture everywhere. And each piece of furniture has little small imperfections, whether it be a dresser drawer not shutting all the way or a chair being tilted or a sofa not being pushed far enough against the wall, stuff like that. The level drains sanity insanely fast as it is and it does it even faster to people who have OCD. The insanity starts to set in slowly, but has a fast buildup over time. If a wanderer breaks something on this level or damages something in any way, an entity called the Imperfectionist will appear and drag you out of the level to a place called the Under Rooms. Nice. This is something you're gonna wanna avoid at all costs because no one knows what happens after that. So if you come here, make sure to bring a large supply of almond water because there's none here, no food or drink at all. So make sure you come stocked. Also, there's another entity here called the Voices, and this is the part of the level that induces the mental health hazard. And the Voices appear on the final leg of Sanity Loss. There are actually five tiers specifically of losing your sanity here. The first is having your normal sanity, then minor sanity. The third is when the Voices start to appear, and they start in a little whisper. Tier 4 is when the voices become louder and they start to shame you, and then tier 5 is when the voices end up tormenting you. No matter how much almond water you drink, it won't stop. Nice. So the imperfectionist entity I was talking about earlier is an entity that manifests itself as a pair of pitch black hands that reach up out of the floor and grab you. There's actually a theory that every time someone is taken to the underrooms by the imperfectionist, there's a new piece of furniture that's added, so that's kind of cool. The voices are voices and there are no outposts here probably because the area is too small to enter this level you have to no clip through a pipe on level two and to exit this level you have to attempt to fix an imperfection and doing so will teleport you to a random level nice stuff dude i like the imperfectionist that's a dope entity next up is assassinators level which is another patron of mine and his level is called level 14.3 or level fort melter it's got a class 5 survival difficulty and is unsafe and it's infested with creatures. 
That's fun. The level looks pretty similar to a military base that was constructed back in 2004 during the height of the war in Afghanistan. The fort itself is surrounded with tall walls and there's watchtowers spread out and it's got some pretty rare stuff inside like royal rations, Wi-Fi, squirt guns, and weapons of all types. It's also got almond water too, which is nice. Additionally, there are working vehicles here and there's also a surplus of food. I might just stay here for supplies. There's also a barracks area that has showers with soap and conditioner and towels. What? <laughs> this is like a backroom spa, bro. Now you're probably thinking, Brugley, how is this a class five when it sounds great? Not great, you still want a military base on a level in the back rooms, but it's great for the back rooms. This level is a class five because of the entities outside of the wall, not inside. There are some good entities though. Oh, and by the way, the outside of the base is just an infinite desert, so nice. So the base itself is one of three zones. The other two are called the Wastelands and the Mortality Zone. The Wastelands is the furthest place from the base that it's recommended to walk or travel because there aren't many troopers that are protecting the area. And we'll get into the troopers in a second. So pretty much it's like a border of where you should go. And if you cross over the border by yourself, you'll be in the Mortality Zone, which this is the final area where the entities like hounds and skin stealers and combines and clumps live. And you literally won't survive if you're alone. So don't even try. It's pretty much a death sentence. Here is an interesting note as well. There's a rumor that if you kill the commander entity here, you'll be sent back to reality. Now, sorry, commander. I'm literally taking my chances to get back home. Now to the entities here. We just talked about the commander who is an entity that dresses in all black Marines clothes and he carries a revolver with him. And he's got no distinct facial features, so it doesn't make sense how he communicates, but he does. He commands the normal troops on what to do. And he's generally pretty friendly unless you start being rude to him. And then he'll either kick you out of the camp or he'll use that revolver on you. I also mentioned the troopers a while ago, and they're referred to as, quote, soldiers, mostly. They seem to be U.S. Army privates that are wearing digital camo and combat helmets. And just like the commanders, they have no features on their face. They carry an M4 rifle with them, and they use it to protect the base's perimeter and the commander. Entities regularly swarm the base at night to listen in for the commander's commands. Yo, that's creepy, what? That's crazy. So the commander and the troops are the nice entities, and like I said earlier, the hostile ones are the clumps, skin stealers, hounds, and combines. To enter this level, you have to locate a sand pile on levels 8 or 5 or 1, and eat the sand, and then chug a full bottle of almond water. No thanks. To exit this level, you have to enter the wastelands with a group of troopers, or if you bought friends, you can go with them too. Just pretty much enter it, not alone, because you'll die if you're alone. You have to kill entities for a full day, and then follow the same steps you did to enter this level. So you have to eat sand and chug water again. And then you'll pass out and you'll wake up on level 6.1. And when you do this, there's about a 1 out of 1,000 chance you'll wake up in reality after eating the sand and chugging the water. So if you're a really lucky person, you might be heading home after this. I love a good military base level. Thank you, Yao K, Robly, and Assassinator for your support on Patreon and for submitting the level. I really appreciate you guys. Next up is Official Sans Undertales level, called level 0 out of 1. This level has an undetermined difficulty because the area changes randomly all the time, and there's a ton of mystery behind it. So level 0 out of 1 is just what it sounds like. It's a level that can only be accessed when you try to leave level 0 of the back rooms, and you get glitched in between it and level 1. This causes a fusion and morphine of reality itself, and it's almost like you're breaking the back rooms. This is like an in-between state, and this in-between state causes some really weird things to happen. For instance, creatures can merge and levels themselves can merge together. So like there could be a half party go or half hound creature, or the same yellow wallpaper from level zero could be painted on a concrete wall from level 20. Don't drink or eat anything here either because they can be mixed up too. Like almond water could literally be liquid pain. So don't even try. Like I said, the only way to enter this level is to get glitched when you try to leave level zero. So just don't get glitched. And to exit, you just have to wait out the glitching, and it'll eventually spit you out on level 1. Nice stuff. So next up is a level from Darren, and it's called All Those Memories. Nice name. The level itself is secure, but being inside of the level is what's actually dangerous. There aren't even entities here except Mind Buzzers, the Judge, and the Insane Wretches, which is a mixture between an insanity and a wretch. So, pretty much nightmare fuel but more on the entities here later. This level is a messy war zone area that has a red sky. When you spawn here, you'll instantly get the feeling like you just won a war that you've been fighting for years, even though you haven't fought a war, obviously. But after seven hours of feeling this good feeling of winning the war, you'll be flooded with feelings of guilt and stress and trauma. At this point, you can either stay 
if you're a weirdo, and be devoured by your feelings, or you can just try to leave. If you stay, you'll start to hallucinate visions of soldiers on your side dying, and you'll be filled with remorse and sadness. These hallucinations continue for eight days, which is only a few hours in this level's times. And after eight days, if you kept any sliver of your sanity, the judge entity will appear and will show you all of your bad memories from real life, the ones you've actually been through. When he does this, he'll induce those same feelings you once had on you again, on top of feeling the guilt placed on you by the level. That's some tough stuff, dude. The only way to escape is to truly accept the feelings and to get over them and go past them and then you can no clip through a house at the base. On top of all those things I just talked about, remember those mind buster things I mentioned earlier? Yeah, they're here to mimic your worst fears. Okay, dude, this is literally like the worst level for your sanity ever. You literally get induced PTSD. If you don't treat yourself or escape, you'll pretty much instantly become an insane wretch within a period of two real life days. Although those two real life days feel like 73 years on this level, so it feels like an eternity pretty much. If you don't become a wretch, well, you still get a terrible end if you don't leave. Because if you keep your sanity, you'll then be glitched into an empty void to live out the rest of your life, alone, in a void. Bro, you can't win for losing here. Although it is worth mentioning that the album called Everywhere at the End of Time is constantly playing through this level. Nice. You can enter this level if you get killed by a smiler, so don't. And the only exit is to go to the military base and escape. I've read a lot of levels and this is one of the most mentally terrifying ones, so good job, Darren. Next up is Buckmaster's level, called level negative 74. This level is classified as class 4, and it has mysterious properties and unknown information about it, as well as some undocumented entities. Nice. There's not much rock solid information on this level, and all that's ever been found is its physical description, and that is that it resembles a Bob Ross painting, because it's got similar landscapes of some of his actual artwork, but it's real life. Some people speculate that when you get teleported to this level, you're actually being teleported to a real-life Bob Ross painting, which would actually be dope at first. At first glance, this level seems pretty safe and even serene to an extent, but it's actually highly dangerous. If you get sent here, you need to exit as fast as possible because in under 7 hours, this level will begin to start making you lose touch of reality and your sanity will pretty much just throw itself off a cliff. And after 7 hours of exposure to this, You'll start to have mental breakdowns and psychological attacks. Nice. If you make it to nighttime without leaving, then these cabin things will start to appear all over the level, and these can range from log cabins to huge houses, like a fancy golf guys club house, you know, you know what I'm talking about. This is literally all the info available on the level, because it's too dangerous to do sustained research on, so there's not any outpost here, obviously except those cabins. You can enter this level for whatever reason if you turn on a TV or if you walk deeply enough into level 6. You can also write school sucks with a Z on the class chalkboard on level 74 as well. You can exit by going through a no exit door in one of the wooden cabins that appears in the nighttime. Or you can build a treehouse nice, in any of the trees around. You could also escape by drowning yourself in a river, but nah, I'm not doing that. Or the coolest way you can escape by beating one of the entities in a game of golf. The entities here are smilers, hounds, and a creature called a chauffeur, which only appears at night in his carriage. He'll take you wherever you want to go, and he'll even offer you a caramel while you ride. If you don't accept the chauffeur's offer, he will literally scream at you until your ears bleed. Nice. Another entity is called the hunters, which are hunters that wear leather aprons, dirty pants, and a big dark brown trench coat. Don't get too close, because if you do, well, they'll shoot you and skin you like an animal. Oh, that's terrifying. The final entity is called the Golfers, and these are just humanoid entities that spawn inside of the big mansions that appear at nighttime. They're friendly, and they all wear the same golf outfit. And if you beat one at a game, like I said, you, you can leave the level. Pretty wholesome. Some other notes from Buckmaster are that the level is also called Happy Little Accidents, which if you didn't know is one of Bob Ross's many catchphrases. He also notes that this level is actually kind of okay as long as you can escape it and get through the psychological torment, but other than that, it's pretty okay. The last note is that if you come across a treehouse that you didn't build, do not approach it because smilers and hounds are going to be hiding there, so don't. Nice level, dude. I love Bob Ross's paintings, and I literally wouldn't mind living here for less than seven hours so I don't go insane, but nice level. And last for today's video is from Mars, and their level is called level 2008, aka Playhouse. 
The level is at class 1 and is relatively safe and secure. It's got three zones as well. And all these zones look like old party things. For example, one zone is Party City, the next zone is Chuck E. Cheese, and then the last zone is a big indoor trampoline park. Two of these zones have custom entities made by Mars, which the first one is in Party City, and the entity there is called the Workers. They're docile kind entities that look like regular humans, except they have TVs as heads, and they'll lead you around the Party City store, where they can lead you to Super Almond Water. Nice. When you go to the Chuck E. Cheese zone, you'll be granted access to food and almond water also, and the only entity here are the animatronics. And these things kind of look like Chuck E. Cheese himself. They're humanoid rat animatronics that can communicate with any language. And they also pretty much have superhuman intelligence. So to leave the Chuck E. Cheese zone, you have to go down a tube slide, but make sure it's the right one because if you go down the wrong one, you'll be sent back to the Party City level to start over. The trampoline park level has vending machines with almond water and food in them, and there are no entities here. Nice. Sounds pretty like a wholesome time. To exit the level, just go to the trampoline in the farthest back section of the park, and just jump on the trampoline once, and you'll be teleported away. Sounds easy enough. Nice stuff. This level kind of sounds like a video game mission in a way, how you have to like do the right things to go to the next zone. I don't know. Pretty cool. I like it. Good stuff, Mars. So we are going to be starting off with Bloody's level, and Bloody created level 354, aka the Bloody City. So I think this guy likes blood. Level 354 looks similar to level 11, which if you don't know, is an infinite cityscape with skyscrapers and stores and everything that a real life city has, except it's a backrooms level. Except Bloody's level is black and white, and the only color that's visible is red. And obviously, that's the blood that's everywhere. You can't see any color except red on the entire level. Sometimes there are food and supplies available around, but they're not there often enough to rely on. The entities located here are the same as the entities on other levels, except they're soaked in a thick blood-like substance and are far more aggressive. The three main ones are the Ghost Ghoul, which is a reddish bird-type creature that can teleport, and the next one is called a Blutter. These are humans that don't have any color except red horns on their heads. And despite their appearance, they're actually pretty friendly. And the last entity is called the Guardian, which is a giant futuristic robot that secures the city using these giant blaster guns it has on its hands. Nice. Uh, they're very hostile and will shoot you on sight. So avoid the giant robot. To enter this level, you have to walk through the red soaked door on level 11, which will take you to level 94 where you'll find a red Mustang. So you enter this red Mustang and it will take you to this level, level 354. To leave this level, you have to watch nine movies in the cinema in the city. There is way too much blood everywhere, but uh, this is a pretty cool level, buddy. Thank you for your submission. So next up is 8-Bit Vipers level, which is level 82268. The layout of this level is an infinite spaceship, and all the gravity on this level just turns off and on at random intervals throughout the level, which is pretty cool. One moment you could be walking normally, and the next moment you're flying up without gravity. The entities on this level are all created by Viper himself, and they are the Gravity Watcher, the Floating Terror, and the Deep Space Lurkers. However, Viper didn't say what these creatures look like or what they do, but they have cool names, so I can just assume they look dope too. And that rhymed. To enter the spacey level, you have to climb exactly 82,268 stairs on the end level, which I covered in another video. It'll be in the description below. Or you can run into an almond water vending machine on level 4, but that only works sometimes. There is only one way to leave this level, and that is by smashing a window, get sucked into the outer space, after this, you'll wake up on level 11. This level is dope. The only thing I would change is to add more explanation to the creatures you made, but other than that, this was dope. Good stuff. Next is Blitzy's level. It's called level 531, or the intense battle scene. This level is classified as a class 5, meaning that it's highly dangerous and not secured. But there are very important and valuable things located on this level. There are also three sub-levels, which we will get to later down in this description. The main part of level 531 looks like a WWE fighting ring that stretches for billions of miles and has an estimated size of over 20 Earths. That's crazy. The second you enter level 531, you're given high-tech armor and a gun with an infinite mag. Cool. Right after you take your first step, you'll be teleported instantly to level 531.1, which is the first sub-level, and it has no entities, and it looks like a claustrophobic inducing house because it has no windows or doors. But on this sub-level, there's a freezer that restocks every hour with food. And there's more armor and weaponry laying around. So you can't stay on the sub-level for longer than 5 hours. So when it hits that 5 hour mark, you'll be teleported to level 531.15. So level 531.15 is the second sub-level. 
and it looks like a training facility where guns are tested. This is the place where you can improve your aim. Trust me, you're going to need it here in a second. And the only entity here is the general, who is an entity that commands you to shoot at 900 dummies fatally so you can kill them. Once you do this, you'll have passed this challenge and a door will appear. And if you don't go to the door after 10 minutes, the general will send you to the last sublevel, which is sublevel 531.99. This is the exact same level as the main level, which is level 531, except the sublevel is corrupted. And it looks like the negative end level, which I talked about in my backrooms explained video. It's literally just a level of glitches flying around in code. On this level, there are hordes of hounds that will start floating through this code towards you in order to escape this you have to kill 2,000 hounds just to get back to the main level once you do this you'll be back on level 531 the normal level and you'll be greeted with tons of smilers and skin stealers and janitors and hounds which are all ready to attack you however in a nice twist at this moment every friendly face lane from levels 5 through 300 are teleported to you on level 531 to help you fight this horde of this pending attack nice to enter this level or its sub levels you have to lose your own life on level 10 and this will bring you to the sub level 531.1 or you can get cured as a stage one insanity and this will also bring you to that same sub level to lead this level you can no clip through the walls on the main part of level 531 and you'll end up in that fake end room that's the library there are like 10 other ways to get in and leave this level but i'll just pop them up on the screen right here yeah this level and its sub levels are pretty cool dude and i really like the idea of having an infinite wwe ring like that's so cool to me the only thing i would add is like this wrestling entity that looks like an actual like wrestler like hulk hogan that it just attacks you right when you get in here but otherwise dope level dude i really enjoyed this one so last for today's video is daniel's level which is called the comfort zone and this is one of the coolest levels i've ever heard of the way to enter this level is still unknown however someone said that they entered the level by following a face lean on level 11 and then they forgot what happened after that but the level itself looks like your house from real life when you enter this level you land on your bed in your own bedroom that you had back in real life once you're in your house and in your room the level begins to distort your memories, making you almost forget the existence of the back rooms and making them feel like a fleeting dream or memory that you have. The house looks exactly like your real house and it's got all the essentials for basic life like food and water, restrooms, stuff like that. But don't be fooled. There are two entities on this level. The first one is called the Comforters and these creatures look identical to the people you lived with. Even if it was a roommate or your actual family, they look identical and they have the same personality as well and they do everything the same that your real family would do. After exactly a month of living with this family, you'll have completely let your guard down by then, obviously, and the comforters will attack you by opening their mouth and their entire face opens up and they'll spray a liquid all over you that can cause you to melt. A survivor claimed that it was actually an almond water mixture after he saw his sister get melted. Another entity on this level is called the mom or the main female of the group, and she collects almond water and puts it in those basic almond water containers that are found all over the back rooms. She'll collect them and then put them in the refrigerator, and then they'll disappear. So it's assumed that this level supplies all the levels of the back rooms with almond water. It's also been noted that this level seems to be more powerful the longer you've been in the back rooms, which is kind of creepy to think about. The only way to leave this level is to fall asleep successfully, which is harder than it sounds because your mind forgets about the need to sleep whenever you get into this level, so you just lose your desire to sleep, I guess. The other entity is called the this I can't pronounce it or even know what it is and it can affect your memories in this level and when you leave the level as well for a short time but Daniel recommends that everyone should try this level as a way to reunite with your family if you've been in the back rooms for a while but just make sure that you can fall asleep so you can leave before it gets too dangerous yo this is a super dope level like actually the false sense of security that you would have like you would see your actual family and they would act the same but you wouldn't even know until they open their face up to try to kill you yeah dope level dude First up is Nice's level, called level 4500, aka the gaming room. This level is a huge white room with hundreds of gaming computers. Nice says that when people come here, it's pretty much because they're bored, and it's because the level is pretty easily located. All of the computers here have Windows 10 installed, and they all have a 7 letter name coded into their code. Each PC has over a thousand games on them, so you're never going to get bored and there aren't any colonies here, and you can enter by going to a building on level 11 that's labeled Gaming Room. Or if you break a crate on level 2, you can find a teleporter to come here. To exit the level, you can just go out the door of the room and it'll take you back to wherever you came from. It's a nice simple one to start off the video. Next up is Guesty's level called level 7.1 aka 
the flooded home. It's classified as a class 2 difficulty and it's unsafe, but it's secure. It's got a low entity count and the level looks like a house with an infinite number of levels or floors and each one of them are flooded. The only furniture on the level is 90s era TVs, bathtubs, clocks, random chairs, and fridges. The clocks are really dangerous though because if you look at one for longer than 5 seconds, all of the exits of the floor that you're on will be blocked off and the walls will start to close in. Once the walls close in on you and on a live view, the floor will then go back to normal like nothing happened. Nice. The water that's flooded all of the levels is salt water, and it's always at 15 degrees Celsius, or 59 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's 50 centimeters, or about 20 inches deep on each floor, so it's around 2 feet deep and cold. Nice. The level pretty much has no entities, but you can rarely find not water on some floors which I explained what not water was a while back in a Backrooms Creatures Explained video, but it's pretty much sentient water. The basement is a section of the level that has its own levels. They're called the basement floors and they have no light or water, and the temperature is over 86 degrees and can go up to 100 degrees, so it's hot down there. There are not any bases here and you can enter by getting into a bathtub on level 7 and going to sleep in it. Once you wake up, you'll be on floor 1 of this level, and to exit, you can sleep in that same bathtub which will take you back to level 7. Or you can stare at a staticky TV for 5 minutes without blinking and be sent to level 12. Nice. Next up is Kilgore's level called Level Fuzzy Memories. It's a class 3 difficulty and was discovered on September 17th, 2020 by a Meg agent. The agent was exploring level 11 when they found a mall that for sure was not there before. The agent then went inside the mall and was transported into some kind of food court which is inside of a mall that stretches out for miles in all directions, including up. The mall itself looks like it's from the 80s or 90s and has vaporwave music and signs all over, and sometimes you can hear classical jazz music playing. And if you do, you have to hide as soon as possible because the entities here are attracted to it, and it's not good to be there when they're running at you. The higher floors of the mall don't have any entities, which is nice, and the lower levels of the mall can lead to the exits, but we'll talk about that in a second. You can get to the lower levels by these distinct black staircases that have specks of blue in them. The entities here are teeth groaners, nice, which are tall black figures with bloody smiles on their faces. Then there's the shadow, which is the same entity that was in yesterday's video. Then there's the gang, which is a group of teens that roam the mall. They aren't human though, but they're close to it. They're harmless and they'll actually answer any of your questions if you have one. Lastly, there's the co-workers, which only appear at nighttime, and they look like the janitors from level 117. They're robotic, fast, and aggressive. Nice. There are not any colonies here, and the only entrance is what I said earlier, which is entering a mall on level 11. There are two exits, though. One of them only works from 3 to 8 a.m., and it's on the bottom floor through a trapdoor, which will take you to a safe level. Then there's a possibility of randomly no-clipping through flower pots on the level. Cool. Next is Can of Angry Airs level, called level 505. It's a class 0 and is safe and secure with no entities. The level looks like a giant grocery store with only one face lane that works there as a cashier. The store has typical store stuff from real life and all the food is consumable. However, if you do steal something, the alarm will go off and the face lanes that are dressed as policemen will take you to the supply room to interrogate you. The police also don't allow pictures to be taken of the level, so don't take any. The sections of the store are the main hall, the cashier area, the supply room, and the alleyway door, which are all exactly how they sound. The entities here are the cashier facelane, which is willing to trade for the food and the drinks that you're going to be purchasing. Then there's the police facelanes, which are police facelanes. And then to enter the level, you can go through an alleyway door on level 11, or you can let a facelane wearing a black cap teleport you here. To exit, you just have to go back out the way you came. Nice. Next is Riley's level, called the Brief Bliss Zone, or level 7155, and is classified as a class 1 difficulty and is safe and secure with a low entity count. The level looks like an attic with no windows or electricity, and the lights here are always off, and there's no visible way to turn them back on. The attic seems to be around 100 miles in size and has a typical bedroom furniture for decoration. When you enter the level, you'll walk down 27 stairs and you'll find a table with a flashlight and a couple of bottles of almond water on it. When the flashlight is off, there's this thick fog that covers the level, but when you turn the flashlight on, it goes away. Nice. It's important to not turn the flashlight on the highest setting though, because if you do, 
it'll attract a small humanoid figure called Bliss, which will appear in the middle of the light beam, then walk towards you and turn off the light. Cool. And when Bliss touches you, you won't be able to move for about a minute and a half, and then you'll be sent to level 19. To enter the level, you can noclip through a flickering light on level 20, and to exit the level, you can get touched by Bliss, or you can shine the flashlight on a knife for 8 seconds and then cut through a TV screen, which will then take you to level 155. Next up is Toaster's level, called level 7479, or Better Off Unalived, if you know what I'm saying. The level is an old wooden house that's surrounded by decaying plants. The walls are all rotting and decomposing, and the grass around the house is dry and dirty. The weather here is always overcast and it'll occasionally rain, and the smell of the level smells like a dingy autumn evening, and all the furniture inside of the house is all torn up and ruined as well. And most of the floorboards are broken or gone, or are in the process of being broken or gone. So pretty much it's just a really badly decaying house. People who have been in the house have described the feeling that they're being watched, and the reason for that is because they actually are being watched by the entities that live here called the Husky Travelers. These are the only entities here and they're very long-limbed entities that are about 8 feet tall with ivory skin, which in texture and color is similar to crocodile skin. They're very docile until you make eye contact and then break eye contact. If you break the eye contact, they'll run towards you and stare at you again, and if they get close enough, well, they'll rip your head off. Nice. To enter the level, you can just go through a door on level 5, and to exit, you can find a golden key in a sofa in the house, which will unlock a door inside that will lead back to level 5. And there aren't any colonies here, because who wants to live in an abandoned house? Let's be real. Last up for today's video is Doodly Bros level, called the Closed Desert. It's a survival dead zone because of the environmental hazards and unreliable exits. The level is in a generated apartment-style building, like level 7, except instead of the floors being flooded with water, they're flooded with sand. The sand is red and orangish, and it's that color because the sand is actually the dry form of liquid pain, and just one grain of the sand can trigger the full effect. There are certain instances of doors leading to brick walls and holes in the ceiling leading to nothing, so a lot of the level doesn't make any sense. There are not any colonies here, obviously. And to enter, you have to drown yourself in sand on a different level, and to exit, you can climb into a roof hole and end up on level 46. Nice. That's it for this huge compilation video. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you're still watching to this point, comment uh, Bruges is cool. The first person to comment that will get pinned. Thank you for all your support recently. I really genuinely appreciate it. I'm going to be bringing back the full-length Backrooms Entity video soon, so watch out in the next month or so for that, as well as some individual Level Explained videos coming out soon. Tons of content on the way. Hope you're ready. Thank you so much to my channel members and patrons for all the support. Go sub to Tugly while you're down in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you later.